Okay, I'll call the meeting to order for March 17, 2020. Result of the agenda for March 17, 2020, regular meeting of council be approved and adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor McTony, seconded by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the minutes of the March 3rd regular council meeting and the March 11th count committee of the whole meeting being received and approved. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Move down to uh, 6.1. Resolved that the building permits 520 through 820 with a total estimated value of 213,700 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor uh, Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2. Mr. Crow, are we supposed to have a, a resolution there? Uh, no, actually. Uh, All Net contacted us earlier this week in light of the uh, virus crisis going on, and they wanted this out on the agenda in discussions with our um, municipal emergency coordinator he doesn't think it would be advisable to get this at this time but we wanted to put it before council just to have that information there it's an automatic dial system to the landlines and as we know uh, every month that goes by there's less and less landlines to contact any questions or reference to that <clears throat> so, our condition is against fire. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, what we need to do is do nothing. Do nothing. Mm -hmm. So, then the, the uh, as council can see, that I guess that's something that it can be really brought forward if that was the case, but there is some cost to, uh, to having that service. You can see the letter. Okay, moving on then. Uh, some <coughs> results the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Mayor Antoni, second by Council Borio. Discussion? Get, uh, sorry, Council Borio. Uh, Mr. Poole, how are we doing with the water main breaks? And it's like, is there, are we experiencing an increase in freezing levels at all, or are we uh, on track as per normal for? This time of year well the frost levels just due to previous excavations are they go deeper than in previous years uh, we're on our fourth break already uh, by mid-march so those, those numbers are a little high but uh, compared to recent years but we'll, we'll see you know, I, I can't say that we expect any anything further in previous years one thing i want to or i want to bring the council's attention is under the transportation engineering section uh, uh mit's requested information regarding uh the redesign of the intersection of 10 and 8 3. so that's where council's asked for left turn signals so that redesign is happening right now so we, if council wants to pull their political strings to get to get uh you know the work being done to, to maybe favor left turn signals coming in from the east and west now now is the time to provide it as the utility locates all the information that they need from the town in order to uh get that design done but uh the, the left turn signals will be a part of their, their criteria and design but it, there's no guarantee that they'll happen and we can you know nudge and, and try our best because we know what's needed <clears throat> Council Why is it needed? Well, it's, we, we've had several, I would say, close calls uh, over the past six to eight years, I would say. But uh, I know I've encountered several times where when you're turning left on a, on a green light and there's cars coming, you just you cannot see. Or, or at least I've experienced that. I know some councillors have experienced it and that hurts several residences. Uh, Complaining of the safety 
of left turns at that intersection. Upper Mayor of Petoni and the Council of Delorier. So just to recap, Council, we did advocate for this, uh, not this year, the previous year, for the left turn signal at that intersection. And in regards to series of accidents uh, at that intersection, and we did advocate for that. I think a study was brought, and that's maybe, I'm, I'm assuming that's a, that this is a follow-up from that study that we asked to be done. Perhaps I'm unaware of the reasons why the the administration for MIT is 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 doing the redesign. They they didn't tell me that if it was a result of our of our ask or not. All I know is that the work is being done by the administrators right now. It's starting now, and will happen over the next several weeks. So the sooner the sooner the better if we can make an, uh, an effect. That's where the, I would ask. Council. I guess I just wanted to, to reiterate that it happened. I think there is a few standing resolutions of council that are in support of left turn signals there, and, that, and we've sent multiple letters to MIT that that they're, they're drastically needed. There has been accidents there, and there have been lots of near misses. Yeah, that goes from this council, I think, and actually with the previous council before as well. And then part of the logic was the size of the vehicles there, the big trucks are coming through and you can't see by through them. Is that part of it? Even a large half ton, if you're if you're if you're at a green light after a red turning left and there's a large half ton across from you on the inside lane, you, you you just cannot see past that truck. And with the lumber trucks it's even more significant. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion, questions, Mr. Poole? I do. Councilor Gray. I got your letter on 9th Avenue and Parkville. Do you think that phone call? Yeah, I don't know what that meant. I guess that was just a heads up for me that, that there was a water break on 9th Avenue North and Parkdale that if residents called saying you know, there's water in the streets, all the administration, at least you guys were in the middle. This is in front of okay. okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Seven two one. Resolved that the February two thousand and twenty Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received as information. Moved by Mayor mm -hmm. Montoni, sent by Councilor White. Discussion. Are, are we getting any closer to? That was a recurring theme for me. So, are we getting any closer to actually getting back to regular service? We'll know most likely definitely in April. Mr. Coral, if you could speak up a little bit more, please. We'll know in April. Okay. Most likely. No, but ask him for April. Possibly. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 722, resolved in the February 2020 Protective Service Report be received as information. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 7.3, Council reports. I'll start with Councilor Deputy Mayor Wintoni. <laughs> no. um, two things that we had, I attended a RISE meeting. Um, last week, I don't even know my days, last week, um, it was a rather interesting meeting, um, and more stress out of that meeting, I think, than was due necessary, but um, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with the meeting, it was it was a rough meeting, and nothing got, uh, I didn't find that anything got necessarily accomplished, but uh, we are, the board did request for a, a headhunter to hire an EDO. Um, I was tasked with that job and I provided my other partners that were in that committee to, with the quotations of the three successful bidders, I guess, so they're reviewing those and we'll have a recommendation to the rest of that board. Um, and more information will, will follow as, as we get to it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about REC as well. We received, uh, our group received a, an email from 
kind of Ms. Nowak indicating several options to go over to consider with with recreation. Um, and I guess it would be helpful, I think, for the three of us that are part of that to hear what the rest of council is thinking about. Um, just make our decision better. I think maybe we should discuss some of those options, though, um, in camera. If, well, if it could be in a cow meeting, maybe? Yeah, that, I was just going to recommend one of those two things, either tonight in camera or a committee of the whole meeting, um, simply so that uh, I, I prefer the in camera, given that we've had now people who are coming to our committee for the whole meetings, um, simply because I think it is about negotiations and I, I think it's inappropriate to have those discussions in public. Um, I mean, we say things, we want to be as candid as we can in those meetings um, so that everybody has some clear picture and we have clear decisions and having that publicly available makes it more challenging to me. So then we'll add that piece to uh, uh, camera tonight so that will be on recreation then? Okay. That was my suggestion. Uh, I think Councillor White wants to speak or ask oh, sorry, a question. Go ahead, Councilor White. question relative to the rise and thank you for participating in making it happen. Are all the partners paid up now? We may be the last. I think I think that we may be the last. We're the last ones to pass the resolution, which I see it's in our agenda um, further on. And I think we may be the last to pay our 2020 share. So did they won't pay their 2020? Uh, they passed the resolutions. I'm not sure officially if checks were sent. Um, but we I, don't know. I don't know, but we are the one of the last ones to pass the resolution. Thank you. Mr. Crow, can we add rise to a camera session as well, please? Yeah. Or is it there? It's not there, is it right now? Um, we can add. Okay, let's add that, please. Okay, you're still on. Um, and then uh, that's it for meetings. Um, I just want to reassure the public that we're the town of Swan River. And our employees and administration are taking every effort um, and every precaution that we need to take. We encourage those businesses um, who are in the same field to uh, look at what the government is putting out in terms of recommendations and follow those rules as well and practice common sense. It's um, wash your hands, it's a cool thing. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Council Morgan. Uh, not a whole lot this uh period there. Last Tuesday we've had a committee of the whole meeting where we discussed a number of issues. Um, I've been fielding a, a few questions from residents regarding the coronavirus or COVID-19 and the town's preparation. Just sometimes on clarifications of the public notices that we did send out exactly what that means, and why we're doing it and whatnot. So, uh, but very simple and transparent there. So, uh, a couple questions to administration. Um, since tomorrow is the 18th, and that was the deadline that we gave the Army of Livingston to provide us some feedback on their assessment and all that, have we had any correspondence back to them on that matter? Um, so I think we need to discuss that further um, since it seems like they're not really engaging until it's the stroke of midnight, um, whether they want fire protection or not. Um, I know they want it, but at what cost and stuff like that. And I think uh, we owe it to um, fire department and some work following dispatcher organizations to provide them some clear direction of what's going there. So um, I don't know if we should uh, deal with that tonight or... We can call them again this week. Okay. okay. Like, yeah, yeah I, mean, I think we need to resolve this at some point in time comes to great just in terms of those kinds of services i thought that we had come to a, a consensus as a council that particularly in relation to fire or, or protective services that they are like um, insurance policies that either you're in as a partner or you're not that's why we're waiting on this we need the right. assessment so that, from them that's so yeah. so i think 
someone who's important to Nelson Morio's point that I think that if we can call them, we should call them and say, look, you know, the deadline's up. But we should also be saying if we don't have something by a certain date, you know, so we're now going to extend it to some date, reasonable number, a week or whatever, then that's it. You're out. Well, I'd like to make a correction that the CIO from the needs to contact Terry. So okay. the numbers may be with Terry already. Sorry, we've had a bunch of stuff going on. Well, absolutely. So, I mean, this was the only thing I did. <laughs> so if we can, you know, maybe ask about that, then we can go from there. So Terry may be just holding them because I haven't asked for them again. Right. As long as we've got movement on that. And, and one final question to administration. Um, I know we have contact with uh, the province of Manitoba and Manitoba Health and all that on uh, COVID-19 and that. Um, has there been any contact or co-preparation and plans with uh, Prairie Mountain Health? Like if things uh, potentially could go sideways, um, are we creating up some of those plans, especially with our geographic area of being two hours in the middle of nowhere? Um, has there been any, have they reached out to the municipality is what I'm asking? I believe our MEC can, has contacted Prairie Mountain, I believe. Uh, I've always been quite active. This is this is really dreams about this. Well, yeah, like I, I share that because like that that was my world for thirty years, and um, I think it's better to be in front of that curve, uh, reaching out and drafting up some of the uh, potential scenarios uh, before yeah, it happens. Many of them in place already, so, um, because you said that at certain points the uh, uh, agreements or uh, memorandums of understanding get triggered at certain points, so. Mm -hmm. Just going to go off of his expertise as a long time uh, emergency planning expert that uh, he, he has, but I will remind him that we should be connecting with uh, those groups. Right. Thanks, that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Councillor Fraser. <clears throat> um, I also was at the meeting of the whole meetings. Um, I enjoyed the presentation that uh, Mr. the commissioner guy, Smith, Gary, Jerry. I thought it was very really interesting. Um, I was at a community of care planning meeting on the 9th, and I had someone who <coughs> called about becoming a cemetery caretaker. Anyway, we can talk about that. We can get a budget. That's it. Yes. Uh, on that, if that's something that the committee wants, you should bring that forward. Or maybe a committee will hold for a, a discussion on that. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Maybe Council Friesen, we can meet and discuss just possible outcomes and what description. What we want from them and he. It's a he. And he's retiring from his job in May, so be, he wants to do something. That's all I want to tell me. Sorry, I just have one more thing to add to my my list, if that's well, okay. Well, you can come for Yes, absolutely. I'm pleased. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I can wait until after everybody as well. It's okay. You're on. Um, I just wanted to extend a thank you to administration for. Um, the efforts that they have taken with alerting the public and notifying um, all the necessary resources out there. So kudos to you guys and uh, thank you for making our community one of the safest places out there. Councilor Gray, thank you. Um, I want to thank Council our uh, Deputy Mayor of Tony for stealing all of my issues, not all of them, <laughs> virtually all. I do want to commend um, management for uh, shutting down facilities for giving good notice on it uh, for being on the leading edge of that as opposed to the trailing edge which we have sometimes done. Uh, we obviously uh, I, I assume in the in the following meeting the, the in camera session we're going to talk about our meeting with the minister. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to raise that. Um, there are a number of issues about rise and recreation to be discussed. Settlement services is not working out of its 
uh, offices. They receive notification from um, the government agency funds it to shut that down. They weren't in Swan River anyway because there's, they're apparently doing some renovations. Um, although they were supposed to pass a lease back through the board and they haven't seen that. So I'm not sure what's going on exactly. But it is what it is. Um, and But the paw piece is being shut down because of the growth of COVID-19. Um, just in terms of the cemetery, I just want to be clear on the process. And, and just, I don't know whether we discuss it here or the whole, but um, I think we should discuss process for everything in terms of uh, I'm, I'm, if we have own sources, that's fine, or if we have contracting out. Um, but in terms of the actual person who's important, I, I don't think that's part of our discussion. I think that just gets passed on in the air for Charles and they take care of it. It's nothing to do with us, it's who it is. But whether we contract and what would we want, that's a discussion for us. Right. That's my view. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to tell you how different this is to anything that's happened, um, at least in my experience. Manitoba Courts, the Court of Appeal, right through every provincial court, had shut down. There is only, there are bail courts and emergency courts left until um, May, uh, April for, April, May 1st, April 30th, uh, in the provincial court until um, April 20th in Queen's Bench, uh, which has far smaller numbers of people anyway. Um, and jury trials through across the province through June 30th are canceled as of now. So I've never seen anything like that. It's just unilaterally, that's it, it's done. Um, all matters that are here in Chicago, for instance, are out of custody, are all on May 6th docket, whatever date they're gonna be on, it's gonna be very much the May 6th one. So um, that's why we create its own set of problems in terms of backlog and challenges and how people perceive it um, in any event. But the, the very more significant point is that if the courts are shutting down, I think we need to be extraordinarily cautious about what we're doing and, and restricting access and need to consider whether or not we should be looking at alternate measures because the whole point of, of getting ahead of the curve, of shutting things down and controlling the spread is that if you do it early, it is incredibly effective. If you do it later, well, it's better than not doing it at all, <laughs> but it's massively less effective. And, and every single expert says that. And I think even President Trump finally came to say that after six mm -hmm. weeks. So, that's it. That's all of my things we've made in the Thank you. And part of that um, planning, we're going to do it in camera tonight as well. So, thank you. I'll do that. Just a, a few small ones. Uh, I met with local PMA staff and uh, a young person in Swan River has expressed interest in going into the medical field. Hopefully we can encourage that person to uh, come back to the Swan Valley. And there's another one in second year residency we're following, so hopefully uh, we can meet with that person in the next little while and also encourage them to come to the Valley. And on the PMH board, I can tell you that one of the discussions relative to what you guys are talking about briefly is they want to update and perhaps facilitate more meetings with the municipal <coughs> councils so they know what is happening. So I, I'm going to be meeting with them shortly. I'll see what's happening there to encourage that. Uh, Swan Valley Sport Fishing with the rest of the province has, uh, would appear to have canceled their banquet. Putting five or 600 people in a hall is probably not a protocol and they had canceled the family fishing day after the Billy Beal, which is a natural evolution. I want to compliment uh, our administrative staff for shutting down the recreation facilities. Obviously, I'm assuming the recreational team was involved in that decision. I think it's very appropriate. And I think a, a shout out to the RCMP. Uh, I have to assume the local RCMP were involved with the Dauphin guys to get the bad guys who got the 11 sleds, half a dozen uh, quads. So maybe a note from yourself, your worship saying, hey guys, keep up the good work because I suspect most of the notes they get are criticisms and, and negative in nature so I'm sure they'd appreciate a good one. Uh, the cow meeting was wonderful. I appreciate the concept. We are discussing the possibility of hiring commissioners to come to help us out. Uh, I like the concept very much. And uh, kudos to the administration and the COVID-19 stuff. I don't think we can do enough. We're sitting apart as we are six feet. What a great idea. 
And on behalf of my Irish ancestry, I'd like to wish all of our, our viewing public and our team a happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, sure, and it's going to get better, you know it. Would you believe it? Thank you. Thank, thank you. I know I can't keep my hat on the couch. <clears throat> Councilor Delorier. Uh, nothing to report that hasn't been reported on. Um, just wanted to give a shout out to all our staff and all our citizens for the for adhering to the guidelines that are being set out. And I know the staff has done a ton of extra work to develop new plans and procedures and, and you know, going through the, the steps for, for all of us. So thank you guys very much. I know it's probably been a lot of unexpected uh, extra work. So thank you. Uh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. I guess for me, you know, in the last week, uh, we we're obviously going into trying times like uh, Councillor Gray had mentioned how things changed drastically in a way that we've never seen before. And, you know, we, we did, uh, administration put out there that what our priorities were, we see that first press release go out and information about our hall and then ultimately we have to close our recreational facilities, you know, the arena and the, uh, the pool and our hall. Ultimately, then the library board made the decision to close them, and those are not all very easy decisions to make, and and they're hard because often people don't understand that. But I think that we we as a group understand and we'll educate more people moving forward that um, this is an important time for us to slow this virus down. And like Councillor Gray says, we don't want to be chasing the tail; we want to make sure that we're getting ahead of it, and that's the important. I think that the uh, the governments and health authorities are putting out there and we must all do do our part obviously and if we're ill stay at home do what we're doing here tonight um, you know like and, and at the same time for mental well mental health you know talking to our you know friends and neighbors by telephone or if it's you know FaceTime or telephone calls you know that's really important to keep that up you know in, in different ways that we're, we're not quite used to but most importantly, I feel that we have the elderly in our community that are feeling stressed out over this too right now. And, and we need to reach out to them, not necessarily going to their homes, but calling them and reaching out to make sure that they're okay and, and, uh, and anything that they could uh, use for, for help. And that's you know, anywhere from your parents, from your, your grandparents to uh, your neighbors. I also like to thank administration. I sat with them a couple times and, we discuss it and it's, uh, we have a good crew here working on this and, and, and planning everything out and covering and I, uh, every little thing that we need to cover off. I think that we are ahead of things and I, and I gratefully and respectfully thank each of you for doing everything that you can and also to our employees that are on the front lines doing whatever they can to keep this organization going. It's really important that we uh, support them and, and making sure that they have what it takes to keep them also healthy, healthy and away from uh, this uh, this virus. And to our citizens, you know, like we will get through this, you know, eventually, but we have to remain strong and and listen to what our health people are saying. And, and lastly, I'd like to say that you know, to our frontline healthcare people who are going to be dealing with this, you know, you know, in the next you know few months or, or so. Um, to wish them all the best and, and, and get us through this uh, unusual time with this uh, this virus. And I wish you all also here at this in this room, you know, good health, uh, safe health with you and your families and your children and so on. And uh, you know, we may even see things may change as far as this meeting, and we may at the point, you know, either canceling or or going to video uh, councils. Uh, instead, so we'll see how that goes, but we'll monitor that as we move forward. The uh, the meeting that was mentioned maybe a little bit earlier with the justice minister has been uh, changed from in person, which was scheduled for Thursday morning, has been rescheduled to um, uh, more or less a video conference. So that is going to be held on um, Thursday morning at the same time through here. So I believe that we've got some equipment that we can get that set up now. So. Um, whoever was planning on attending that, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that in camera as far as what we, what angles what we're going to talk and, and ask uh, the minister. So I'm glad to see that the minister is still willing to, to meet with us and, and discuss 
that uh, this also important issue that we have in our community, which is crime. And with that, uh, that's it for me. Um, Mr. Kroll, anything from you or a brief overview of your report for the last little bit? Uh, yes. So, so, yes. Okay, I'll move the result. I'll, I'll move it then. Result of the manager's report and the crisis response report for March the 17th, 2020, be received as information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Montoni, second by Councilor Gray. Okay, discussion or anything that. So, uh, the, the general report, which you see each month, uh, is there any questions on, on that? It's generally just an accumulation of uh, what's been reported back to me through managers' meetings and incidental meetings. Uh, the second uh, report that is there is the, uh, the response report from the town, uh, what, what the town has done and what our timeline is uh, <clears throat> for, for reacting. And, uh, and in review of that, when we were going through that, we, we realized that actually we were, we were acting as a town uh, seven days before Manitoba uh, reported its first case, uh, and, and we continue to react uh, throughout uh, this whole crisis that, uh, that is going on, and we, we will continue to react. And, and I, I would like to thank uh, two people, uh, in particular Patty and Ken. Um, they've been really on top of it, and, and uh, as, as much as I might be directing things, it's a lot of times it's Patty and Ken that are really doing the uh, doing the work and Ken does a lot of the uh, looking up the different procedures that we need to be doing to take care of, of things like that as I say and that's what I think he looks for so uh, as much as uh, it's a trying time I think it's a it, it's a challenge he really uh, he really enjoys. I would like to thank the mayor who has attended uh, uh, several meetings uh, just to, uh, to really have that council uh, affect on the meetings to say that uh, you know we're, we're all on the same team together and, and we're working through these things together. So uh, we'll just continue to, as a as a, an administration to to follow what the province and federal government are advising us to do. Been good reason. So, okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions at all? Okay. All in favor? Let's carry. <clears throat> Eight point one resulted. Patsy Cole Hardy Company Chartered Professional Accountants be appointed as the auditor for the Town of Small River for the 2019 fiscal year. Moved by Deputy Mayor Montoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Let's carry it. 8.2. Result of the Town of Small River Award. Waste Disposal Grounds Tender to LC Contracting Limited for the regular operating hours indicated in the bid specifications for the price of $298,000 for June 1st, 2020 to May 31st, 2021, $304,000 for June 1st, 2021 to May 31st, 2022, $310,000 for June 1st, 2022 to May 31st, 2023, 316,000 for June 1st, 2023 to May 31st, 2024, and 322,000 for June 2024 to May 31st, 2025, for plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councilor Memorial, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Councilor Gloria. No, 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 no discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 8.3. Result of the pool project charter dated March 20th, sorry, March 2020, be approved and that the project move ahead within the estimated total budget of $900,000. Moved by Deputy Mayor Montoni, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? 
Councilor uh, White, you're opposed? Okay. It's carried. Mm -hmm. Resolved that the March 11, 2020 proposal from KGS Group for the Mechanical Engineering Services in the amount of 54,651 plus applicable taxes at the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center be accepted. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Whereas the town of Swan River has locally advertised for the sale of lots 33 through 42, Plan 1017, Civic Location, 210 Third Avenue South on its website and to interested parties inquiring on general lot sales. And whereas the town of Swan River has no interest in all, or, sorry, no interest or offers on the property since the demolition of the previous trailer owned trailer town owned trailer court. Therefore, be it resolved that the town sells lots 33 through 42 of the plan 1017 in the amount of two thousand dollars as per offer received. March 15, 2020, on the condition that 10 modular homes be built within five years of the possession date be added to the sale agreement. Moved by Councillor DeLorean, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Uh, Councillor DeLorean and Councillor Gray Memorial. So in, in his letter, he uses the term RTM and modular home interchangeably. To me, those are two different things. Do we, do we are, so are we saying it's a modular home, so it's going to be another trailer, trailer what, court? What he's explaining, <clears throat> I've talked to him several times, is what we would define as a modular home. He refers to it as RTM. If you talk to him, he says RTM constantly. But, and he, he refers to it in his letter, but uh, what we would define what he's explaining is a modular home in our zoning definitions. A trailer. Yeah. But it would, it would, it's wheels and everything would be removed and it would be on the foundation. Yeah. Uh, you're still on. So it, have, it, have you guys started working on a development agreement or how, how does this work? I guess, how do we, how do we hold them to this? Would there be a, a caveat registered against the land to make sure that they're new? Like he's made some some promises in here. How do we hold them to these promises? Well, I don't know. If, I guess we could call it a development agreement, but we could have that as part of the sale agreement. We could put in any conditions that, that we would like. Uh, uh, I, I know that he he's told us that, that he wants brand new units on every lot. He is, you know, he's obviously, he's going to pay the cost to get them going and rent them out. But uh, if we want to put that in the, the condition of sale, that's up to us. I, I guess I'd just be worried about you bringing a trailer from 1973 and onto there and we're back to the same problem that we spent twenty grand to get rid of a couple of years ago. Because I, I just a little bit of a history lesson. There was a trailer court there, and we spent a considerable. Amount, and the infrastructure underneath was not in good shape, and but there's been no repairs made to that. So uh, I, I don't know what the plan is for that in relation to this. But uh, we'd be right back to where we started. Mr. Kroll, uh, could I suggest that because this did come in late in the agenda? that we could defer it to a cow meeting and maybe produce some stipulations that we want to add to a development agreement and then bring it back? I, I would be in favor of that because I think there's just too many places where this could go sideways on this. I'm not necessarily against it because it's not super prime land that we have people beating down the door to develop and I, development is, is a good thing, but I think we want to make sure that it's done right, make sure that the infrastructure underneath gets fixed. That was the whole root of the problem before. So so I think we definitely want to take a good look at this. Councilor Grant. Uh, I'm going to move that we table this to the um, April, probably April 21st, our best. Uh, April 21st um, meeting, uh, and that in the meantime it be considered at a computer pool. So, uh, move to table, seconded by 
Mr. Morio, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I have a question. Okay, in mm -hmm. regards to timeline. Okay. Do we know when he would like to? He he just he just explains that he will have ten brand new units within five years on the ten lots. Okay, so there's no point to get it okay. out. Eight point five. Result of the engineering department purchase a hot water pressure. A hot water pressure washer unit from Valley Bearing and Auto in the amount of six thousand seven hundred and sixty-three and ninety-four cents plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Um, how much did you budget? I assume this was in your operating budget. How much did you have in your operating budget for it? Uh, we had around for sixty-five hundred, half that transportation, half that utility. So it's a little bit higher. It is a little bit higher, yeah. Further discussion, Councilor Gray? It's $300 higher. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 9.1. Whereas Richard Dick George Walker was a resident of the town of Swan River, and whereas the town of Swan River has the opportunity to express its appreciation for the unique efforts and abilities of Dick Walker, not just as a highly respected local philanthropist, but also as a Swan Valley resident who truly exemplified what it takes to be a volunteer committed to supporting numerous initiatives, projects, and events throughout the Swan River Valley, who spent countless hours with organizations such as Ducks Unlimited Canada, the Rotary Club of Swan Valley, the Swan River Valley Agricultural Society, and more. All in successful efforts that have made a difference for everyone living in and visiting our valley. Therefore, be it resolved that the first street north between Fourth Avenue, sorry, Fourth Avenue North and PTH 10 North have the honorary name Richard Walker Trail, and all current signs be fitted with an additional decorative street blade with that name. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Premier Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Um. In your uh, supplementary information that we got tonight, um, you say that we're in for Century Bay and 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 Fifth. We're in the uh, we've received conditional approval. Yeah. What, what are the conditions they've placed on it that we have to meet by September twentieth? Uh, the conditions were that all variances for lots uh, less than fifty feet wide uh, be passed by council, and, and that was done early January. Uh, Development agreement be made on the lots. So they, I explained that we have a development agreement on six pending sold lots or, or lots that are going to be sold pending a registration. We have a development agreement for those, but not for the other ones because we live in Swan River and development is just slow. So, so we, we are the developer on all those lots, right? We will be after this is registered. So we have to make a development agreement with ourselves? I asked. That, that was the reason why. I said, wait, we can give a template of what our development agreements look like, but we would not enter into an agreement with ourselves uh, unless, unless we want it to do that doesn't make sense. So she agreed and said, just give us the template along with the agreement of the six lots, and uh, that would be satisfactory. So, so really, we've met, we've, met, we'll, we've met the conditions already for the September 20th to, to actually name a street after him. Yeah. Would it, would be twelve hundred dollars, and getting a surveyor to to do that, right? To yeah, do the I, prints. Yeah, I I just haven't had the surveyor basically tell me when he can get it done and to solidify that price. That's that's just an estimated cost of what I think it would be would be done to get their administration to get those mylars uh, uh, done, signed by everyone who needs to sign them and registered. And then, of course, we would give it all to to the planning office uh, with the rest of our information. So, yeah, just to answer your question, it was easements as well, which we have from Hydro Westman and TS. So, they to change the name, they don't have to go through that process with Westman, MTS, Hydro, or anything like that, just to change the name of the street, right? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. 
as my feeling is, he contributed a lot to this community, more than $1,200. I'd like to see an actual street named after him. If it costs us $1,200 to name a street after him, I think that's a that's something that's forever. You, you can't just rename streets. You can take that topper down. Uh, one resolution passed by a future town. I don't know why they would want to, but to me, to honor somebody like, like Dick Walker, naming an actual street after him, should, I, I guess, how would this jeopardize our application? Like, I guess we... If, if, uh, if we wanted to change the name and say, say it did take all of eight months and we went way past the deadline, we would simply, we would have all the information and it would just take time. We would have, we would have to re-register the process and start all over again. And uh, I, I, I don't know if the plant, if the planning district would make us resurvey, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I think we would have everything we need and we just start over again, which I don't think would be too big of an issue since all the information is there, but. Councilor Gray. Um, why would it take eight months to do okay. uh, We've had, we've had with them on the surveyors, depending on what's being done, we waited as much as 14. Okay, I, I, I can say with some assurance that the planning districts allow, the, the branch allows for extensions if you ask for it in advance. I think it could be up to the same length of time. Yeah. So this is a two year project, so you have to have up to another two year extension, up to two years in total extension, is my recollection. So I, I agree with Council Tory, let's, let's do this right. Do it once, do it right. The, the original deadline is September 20th, 2019. We're on our first one year extension. Oh, okay. <laughs> Councilor Deloria? And I guess maybe I'm embarking on the wrong track. I'm not going to, if the resolution that's presented tonight with the, with the topper, I'm not going to vote against that. But I think if we, if we have the ability, I guess another question then, is there any other streets that are going to, you know, in the next year or something? That's really annoying. Yeah, in the next year or something, that you know we're going to go through this process and we don't have to stall this process we're currently underway with. Uh, and huh. unless unless there's some development like behind formal areas that somebody wants to subdivide, and uh, unless barring a, a pretty large subdivision that would have a significant street on it that we could name outside of some access. To a property, uh, I can't think of any. <clears throat> okay. okay. Further discussion? So, Council Moria. I don't know what the proper procedure is, but I think we probably do it right and put an official street. Uh, we got two of them that in this process where we have two names up, there's two potential, there's the Bay and uh, sixth or fifth, whatever it is. Um, so I think our, if we defer this resolution until we get more, get this process done. Are you asking to table it? Refer to the meeting. Defer? If, if councils are the opinion of, of actually going through this, I would defeat this resolution and then have a new resolution to, to do what we want to do. Yeah, that was going to be my next words. So. <clears throat> Mr. Kroll, uh, defer if it's asked for? Do we vote on it or do we... I'm not too sure... The motion is made to table, you're supposed to deal with that. I didn't ask here a motion to table though. Can I, yeah. can I make a suit? I, I suggest that we... Um, I would feel uncomfortable voting against the rest of the so state. And so what I suggest we do is table it to the next regular council meeting. Um, and if it doesn't come on the table, then it dies without us having to vote on it. In the meantime, we can talk about the committee of the whole and have an alternate resolution that's placed on the table for next meeting. And that avoids the embarrassment of us voting against something that none of us want to vote against and gets the result we want. Right. So, motion yes, table, table by Council Gray, second, second by Council Morial. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, it's table. Well done. I can see that coming out of the they defeated the motion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Result of the Parkland Tourism 2020 membership fee in the amount of $1,300 be approved for payment. Moved by. No, 
company. Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delor Delorie and the Deputy Mayor Lintoni and probably everybody else. Okay, I, I feel really embarrassed that I don't have my finger on the pulse on this one because normally with money I try to, but I'm very confused because we went through a process where we paid our parkland thing and then, then we gave the money either to the Valley of the Mountains and they paid it for a year or two and now now we're going to pay it. I just want to make sure we're not going to give money to Valley Mountains or if it was the chain or uh, Rise or whoever it was that we gave the money to pay, it, we're not going to double pay. Does anybody know the full story on this? Um, I know last year, I guess I don't know anything prior to that. Last year, um, the Valley in the Mountains paid the tour uh, parkland portion and then billed it to the municipalities, um, which we ended up paying only our portion to Valley in the Mountains and not parkland. And this year, Valley in the Mountains is wanting to separate itself from parkland in terms of billing um, so that's the answer to, to your story I think um, parkland tourism has not done much for our area um, and I think that the Valley of the Mountains Board is looking at that and wanting to partner more with the north than with parkland um, in my opinion I don't think that we see enough value in parkland for our return on investment okay and that was what you were raising your hand for that? Yes. Okay. Council Moria. Um, I was going to say the exact same thing. It's like we're looking to create more partnerships with the North, um, looking in the Parkland Tourism Magazine and stuff like that. Uh, the Swan Valley rates a very municipal amount of space that's in there. It's not very well promoted by the uh, executive in the partnership. They're more focused on the southern portion. Um, I think we focus more on joining more in the north or promoting if we um, if need be with the valley or in the mountains if we were giving them more funds or whatever to do it and promote ourselves versus just sending this money down to a membership that uh, says takes our check and says thank you and really doesn't uh, promote our area as well as they should so um, I personally can't support this um, at this point so Councilor Friesen I just Agreeing with my learned counselors. Okay. Councilor Gray? Well, we will allow the majority of people speaking against the motion. Rise specifically voted against it last year, was we were supposed to do it. I think Valley and Mountains picked it up because there were some transition growing issues, we'll call them that. But the reality is that we have consciously decided we're going to be more thoughtful about how we put money in as a council and I think the other councils to an extent too in terms of tourism and so on and and um, this and a number of other projects where we send money to Dauphin and some of that have been less than fully successful in terms of helping our area and so yeah, I don't think it's value for us I think there's no purpose in us doing it if they want to come and say, here's how we're going to give you value, I, I'm certainly, but they just send it, but they really want to just send us an invoice and then do their own thing down there. Right. I agree with that. You know, sell it first to us. Councilor White, did you have a question? No, thank you. Okay. Councilor Gloria. Um, a couple of councilors have mentioned, you know, aligning ourselves with the North. Now, how does that process work? Because Tourism Manitoba would have put us in the Parkland Tourism District, right? So we have to lobby them to get moved into the, the north. Do we pass a resolution here and send a letter saying that we request to be put in with the north or do that as, you know, as a community of councils, the G G5, or how, what does that process look like? I, I think that um, to answer your question first, uh, Councillor Delory, I really think that uh, Valley of the Mountains is doing a good job on uh, looking to where we need to spend money in tourism. I think, or in my opinion, that we should, um, if, if that's the case, we should perhaps write a letter to um, Valley in the Mountains and say, you know, this is our thoughts. We don't see that we're getting value on here. In what ways can we support you in the tourism side? And they're definitely working on, on lobbying to be part of the North more than than the parkland, um, but I think it's that it's their job to 
lobby and figure that out and then tell us where we can support. So that's that's my opinion. Also for the gentleman that did send the letter to us, our Valley in the Mountains group contacted him 16 times before he returned a phone call. So that's another added. Okay. Did you have something? Else? So we're ready for the question. Okay, you're ready for the question. All right, so there's no further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, it's defeated. All right, 9.3. Wow. Whereas on January 27th, 2020, a meeting was held with the rural municipality of Mountain, Town of Swan River, the municipality of Swan Valley West, and the municipality of Minnetonas Bozeman to discuss the future of Swan Valley Rise, regional initiative for a strong economy. And whereas it was agreed that economic development was important to the valley as a whole and that a three-year funding commitment be made instead of a two-year or year-to-year. Therefore, be resolved that the Town of Swan River fully supports the continued operation of Swan Valley Rise and be further resolved that the Council of the Town of Swan River agrees to support a commitment for funding the operations of Swan Valley Rise for the 2020 to 2022 fiscal years with the understanding that the annual budget for Rise will be set at $100,000 for 2020, $130,000 for 2021, and 160000 for 2022, and the levy for each participating municipality be based 50% on assessment and 50% on per capita basis. The most recent assessment and Statistics Canada population data will be used to determine the levy. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? There's only one word I would change from B to each. The very last sentence. The levy, each levy. Right. So it's, not, it's on a continued basis, it's the most current numbers. The numbers change now. Okay, we can do that. Okay. The mover and the second are obviously uh, agreed to that. Probably will be in Yeah. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Let's carry. Ten point one. Resolve the checks as follows: be hereby approved for payment. General checks number twenty five eight three nine to number twenty five nine two five for a total of one hundred sixty three thousand eight hundred thirty one and seventy seven cents. Payroll accounts checks number forty six thirty one to number forty six thirty eight for a total of one hundred five thousand nine hundred sixty four and eighty cents. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11 1. Result of the bylaw 16 2019 being a bylaw to provide for an administrative penalty scheme for, the par for parking and general bylaw enforcement may read a second time. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayo and Tony. Discussion? Councillor Gray. No, I just wanted to check something. Just okay. calling it out. We made the change to the. <laughs> change it? Yeah, on page nine and twenty. Are you just loading and not loading the money? The fines for uh, handicap parking were changed to two hundred. Okay. Yep. And I think each one of the other ones was raised. Change to 100 from 75. Yeah, about well, 25 for most of them. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11 2. The result of the Town of Swan River Bylaw 1 2020 being the bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 8 2019, provide, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of funds for the construction of a new well. Control building, including programming, monitoring, isolation capabilities, connections to existing walls, connections to existing raw water supply, and auxiliary works be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
Three, result of the town of Swan River bylaw number two, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number nine, 2019, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for construction of the Swan River Centennial Arena fusion welded floor, including installation, installing temporary mechanical piping, sand floor, and new header system, removal of old header system, raising boards, leveling existing floor, Installation, installing insulation and vapor barrier and, and other required works therefore be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11-4, result of the bylaw 14, 2019, special service residential waste and recycling collection be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the Town of Swan River Bylaw, line 2020, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its bylaw 8 2019, which provided for the expenditure of more in the funds for the construction of a new well building, including programming, monitoring, isolation capabilities, connection to existing wells, connection to existing raw water supply, and auxiliary works be read a third time in the past. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor White. Recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the Town of Swan River Bylaw 2, 2, 2 2020, being the bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 9, 2019, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for construction of the Swan River Centennial Arena fusion welded floor, including inst installing temporary mechanical piping, sand floor with the new header system, removal, removal of an old header system, raising boards, leveling existing floor, install installing installation, insulation and vapor barrier and other required works therefore be uh, uh, read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? Is carried. Result that pursuant to sections 1523 of the Municipal Act, Council go to the committee and close the meeting to the public. We have uh, emergency planning, recreation, rise, and meeting with the Minister of Justice. Moved by Councillor Premier Tony, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. Resolve this regular meeting of Council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.